Hello and welcome to this video on some Power Query gotchas. Some scenarios in Power Query, especially when you're getting started, that you wouldn't expect. And more importantly, what is the solution to these unexpected pitfalls? Now this video follows my previous general Excel gotchas video. There is a link to that in the description. This one now focuses specifically on Power Query. Probably the biggest gotcha when people start with Power Query is that it is case sensitive. So any M code that we write or when we need to type within some transformation windows, we always have to be careful with the case that we type. It needs to match the values we're dealing with or the name of those functions that we're working with. And it's so easy to relax or forget that because when we work with Excel on the sheet, writing formulas, case is very rarely an issue. Now, there are numerous examples we could do here, but for purposes of demonstration, I'm going to do a filter on the country column. So let me come in here and do that filter and I'm going to ignore the checkboxes, which would probably be easier for me to work with, but I want to demo this entry of case. So I'm going to go for text filters and click on equals and I'm going to filter for the country of Germany. So I'm typing that in all in lowercase, which is incorrect. So when I click on OK, even though I typed Germany correctly in terms of the letters I used, it was not correct in case, therefore nothing is returned. So again, please bear in mind I'm doing a filter demo here, but this applies across Power Query. So there are different solutions here, and the solution depends really what you're doing. The ultimate solution is just be careful of the case that you're typing. But in this specific scenario, a possible solution is that I can come and edit the M code and I could change it to a slightly different function or to be precise I could nest a function in here uh, called text.contains and by using this function I will have an option I will have an argument which will allow me to ignore case so it is possible that you're using a function that will have an option such as that but that really is the, the odd one out when dealing with Power Query, kind of the opposite of Excel in the traditional sense. So here I could type comparer and use this ordinal ignore case. And if I run this function, then I'm going to get the Germany results despite me writing it in the wrong case. Another possible solution, and once again, it very much depends on why you're doing this and your data, but another possible solution is to bookend the step with a change case step. So the text.contains function that I typed a moment ago has been removed. And let's deal with this by bookending that change case step. On the right, I'll click on the source step. And I'm going to insert the step by going to transform, format, and lowercase. So knowing that people are maybe always searching for lowercase here, I'm going to insert a step which forces the values to lowercase before the filter is then performed. And as I step into the filter step, I can see the filter now accurately returns the results. And then I can format it with another change case step, putting it back to capitalize each word as the countries should be. So that is another possible solution but to repeat what I've mentioned already, the ultimate solution is to always consider the case that you're typing in due to its importance in Power Query. A gotcha which catches many Power Query users out is the importance behind the order that you select columns. Now this impacts many transformations of Power Query. Let's imagine I want to move the first name and last name columns to the beginning of this table. 
Now if I select the last name column, hold control, click on first name, and then drag them to the start of the table, then it will do as I require. However, notice that it puts the last name column first. And that's because I selected that column first. Now, many people will have been caught by that. They wouldn't necessarily expect the importance behind the order that they selected those columns. Now, continuing, let's imagine I want to merge those two columns and I want to put them in that last name, comma, space, first name order. If I select first name, control last name, I might be expecting last name to appear first because it appears first in the table. But when I go to add column tab, merge columns, and ask it to use a separator of a comma space, and that the new column will be called full name, when I click OK, I see it's actually, just as I move to the end of this table here, put the first name first. And once again, that's because I selected that column before I selected the last name column. So these are not the only two instances within Power Query. We could go on and on with more, but there's two examples there of Power Query transformations and how the order that I selected those columns impacted on the result. Another big Power Query gotcha, and it certainly gets me to this day, is the autocomplete. It doesn't function exactly as the autocomplete of an Excel formula would when you're writing functions in formulas. So I have a blank new query started here, and I want to use the Excel.CurrentWorkbook function. So I start typing in the formula bar, excel.currentworkbook, and I see the function already top of the list in this autocomplete list. This is fantastic. I press my tab key and I'm up and running with my function. But let me just backtrack a moment. And if I had typed in Excel and then put in that period, that dot, and then I noticed and pressed tab, it ends up writing Excel twice in that function. Very irritating. And although I'm demonstrating it with this function, this is an issue across much of Power Query. So we can see there seems to be some kind of inconsistency. When I just had, for example, EXC and I saw it, pressing tab was great. But as soon as the period was involved, uh, such as dot CR, then you notice and press tab, it duplicates the, the word Excel. So that's certainly something to be aware of. I'm such in the habit of writing Excel formulas and using my tab key to populate references in tables and functions as I'm typing them that I just can't stop myself doing it despite being aware of the problem. Another big gotcha in Power Query is the way that it rounds values when you use the number.round function. Now take a look at the column I have selected and in particular, the fourth and sixth values. You can see in the decimals that have 0.50 and what we're going to do is round these to zero decimal places for purposes of a demonstration of how Power Query rounds them. Now I'm going to add these results as a new column as opposed to transforming the selected one so that we can easily compare them side by side. So up to the add column tab and to the right of that column, we have the rounding button, which offers three different rounding calculations. I'm going to go for the typical round, which we would probably expect to behave the same way as the Excel round function, but it does not. If I specify zero decimal places and click OK, I get the new column, currently called round, and you can see the results in the fourth and sixth rows as previously specified. You can see the one in the fourth row has rounded up to 230, and the one in the sixth row has actually rounded down to 3,272. 
So we have a different reaction from two different values with 0 0.50 in the decimals. Why did they behave differently? Well, the default rounding mode in Power Query is to round to the nearest even number. So for 229.50, the nearest even would be 230. And in the case of 3272, it was closer to round down to that even number, as opposed to rounding up to 3274. Now we probably did not expect that because that's not how the Excel round function behaves. Excel round would have rounded both of those up. Anything 0.5 goes up, under 0.5 goes down. So how do we do that in Power Query if that's what we want? Now, if I look at the M code generated by that step, I can see the number dot round function. And if I click after the zero, which is the number of decimal places that I specified, and put in a comma, I can see this argument for round in mode. And if I type in round in mode, I can see that one of the options for me is away from zero, which is your classic rounding. Whereas the default is the one in that list saying two even. Interesting to note that there are other options there and depending on your circumstance, you may be interested in those. But for now, I'm going to click on away from zero and I will apply that function. And now looking at the two values, I can see the one in row four and the one in row six have both rounded up. Our final big gotcha is the automatic change type step. I've got a really simple table on screen at the moment, and I'm going to quickly load this into Power Query by coming up to data from table slash range. And as it loads into the editor, it will trigger a change type step, which we can see on the far right hand side. Now in this example, that is fairly insignificant and kind of redundant, but I'm going to do a split column step here and I'm going to split that column at the space. So if I click on split column on the home tab by delimiter, it auto detects the space and I'll say okay to confirm I'm happy with that. And what it's now done is produce this second column, trigger a second change type step and convert my value into a negative value. Now that shouldn't be a negative value. That is a number of occurrences and should be positive. But because of my regional settings and that value being in brackets, it has assumed it to be a negative value. Putting a value in brackets is a common scenario uh, in my region of the UK. Now that's the wrong assumption here and there are numerous ways that I can fix that, either by converting that number or indeed removing the change type step on the right. So just seeing the second of my suggestions there, if I did come over to the applied steps and remove change type, it brings me back and keeps the value within the brackets. Now I'm not saying that that's really what I want. I don't actually want the brackets there. So I'm not necessarily saying that that's the best solution for this specific example. I'm just demonstrating the issue that the automatic change type step produced. And this can be surprising for users and maybe even confusing for users why what has happened happened. So it's certainly something to get used to and people who use Power Query a lot, I'm sure are very familiar with that. Now we've just closed down the editor and discarded my changes because something we could do is we could disable that automatic change type step. It's something that many people would like to do. However, whether you do it or not, I'll leave in your hands. It's not necessarily a problem or a bad thing, it's just something to be aware of when you're using Power Query that that step is triggered. So to turn it off, I would click on data, then get data and down to query options. Within query options, I can come to data load, uh, this global option. This one will change it for all workbooks for me. And I'll tell it to never detect the column types in that third option. I'll click OK to confirm that, and let's see this in action. I'll load it back into Power Query from table slash range, 
and immediately I see the data type as alphanumeric and on the right, no change type step. If I split this column, split column by delimiter using the space, okay. And once again, no change type step triggered. So that is a solution if it appeals to you. I hope you found this video useful. Five classic gotchas in Power Query. If you did, please give it a thumbs up to show your support and subscribe to this channel to receive the latest video tutorials. Take care and I'll see you again very soon.